Okay. So, what I want you to notice, you guys have your graph paper in front of you. you. The key thing you have to keep track of is where each graph starts at. This was a graph of sine. Your starting value for right now, until next class, is always going to be at zero. Okay, when it's at zero, is it on the axis, is it at the peak, is it at the valley, where is it? Yeah, it starts on, and I'm going to say, I'm going to say, tell you to write this, it starts on the axis. Because um, we're going to shift these babies later. So it's not always going to be the origin, it's, but it's going to start on the axis. So that's why I'm making a distinction there. So sine always starts on the axis. There's a couple, some terminology that goes with waves. Is that everybody in physics? Oh. But you haven't got, waves are at the end of the year, you haven't got there yet. Yeah. Okay. Okay, a wave has what's called an amplitude. The amplitude I of the wave is, in layman terms, it's the height of the wave, but technically it's the distance from the axis to a peak or valley. But basically we're thinking, how tall is the wave? So if I go back to that, what was the distance? From the axis to the tallest point on the wave, how high did it get? One. Normal amplitude is one for sine or cosine. Are we going to be able to change that? Absolutely, yes, we are. But normal amplitude is one. But, so that's one thing you have to know is the amplitude is the height of the wave. The other thing we're going to have to keep track of is how long it is for it to go through one cycle of the wave. What is determining one cycle? One cycle, if I start right here at the origin, I'm on the at, on the axis headed upward, where's the next place? I'm on the axis headed upward. Uh, 2 pi. Yes, 2 pi. So for normal for sine, the period, and that length is called the period, the periodic. So that length across there is called the period. In physics, they'll call it the wavelength. And the wavelength is frequency, frequency with But for our, for the math, it depends on what you're using with in physics. The math side of it, we just call it period, but physics will adjust that name depending on if you're talking about light waves, sound waves, whatever you're talking about. For us, it's a period. So. so the period is the length of one cycle. So for us, and the key thing you do need to know here, normal on sine is 2 pi. That's going to be a really important number. Kay. Now, before we go start playing with how you change amplitude and period, we need to find out what cosine looks like. Anybody got any gut instinct about what cosine is going to look like? Because yeah, think about what is cosine when you do the special angle table. Oh, yes, I go back. Oh, here we go. So cosine when we do the special angle table, isn't it the exact same number as sine? Just in reverse order? Not the reciprocal, no. Nope. It's not taken. So Think about the special angle table. When sine is positive, cosine is negative. So if I come back over here and I, let me make this a little bigger, and I add cosine to this thing, then I'm going to have, I'm going to have the same angle, but we know when we do the cosine column, we just write this thing in reverse order. So it should be the exact same points we just plotted. It's all a matter of how it starts. When you're at zero, where is cosine? One. Let me write. Hang on a second. Cosine's at one. So cosine starts at the peak. Where 
binary, sine starts on the axis. Since cosine is 0, 1, it starts at the peak of the wave. But since it's going to plot these exact same numbers, it's the exact same wave. It exactly starts it differently. Starts. Just starts, it starts differently. Okay, so then if it's at the peak at 1, where is it going to be at pi over 2, the next quadrant line? It's going to be on the axis. Okay? Okay, so you all right. Zach has it going down the valley. Has it going down here? Does that make sense with the quadrants where cosine is positive and negative? Cosine is positive in the first quadrant, which is zero to pi over two. When I go to the second quadrant, cosine is negative, so it's down. Um, so it's the same one for right now is fine. So then when I come back up, third quadrant is going to still be negative coming back up. And we know cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. So it's going to go back to the peak by the time it's done. So it is the identical wave of sine. It's just shifted so it starts in a different position. The only difference between the two. You, you should notice about all these graphs of the wave, if you started at the peak, you have to end at the peak. Sine starts on the axis, so when you end one cycle, you're back on the axis. That's a way to know you haven't skipped the mess up. You have to always be at the exact same point when you end. You have to be at the same point where you started. The cosine, consequently, and we're going to graph them both, but as far as real-world applications, mathematicians tend to use sine. Cosine is almost the same thing. And depending on if we want to change our start point, we may use cosine some, but sine is the most commonly used. Okay. So tell me all the real world things that have waves. Sound. Sound. Light. Light. What did you say? Oh. Okay. That way. Okay. There, that's a sound wave. Waves of the ocean. Waves. <laughs> Microwaves. Radio waves. Radio waves. I'm going to explain to you AM and F, why it's AM and FM here very shortly. <laughs> we're looking at it right here with these graphs. So understanding particularly the graphs of sine and cosine explains a whole lot of things in the real world. When you, if those of you who in physics or when you get to physics, you'll get to do this wave stuff in physics and it's the same thing. It's a sine or a cosine wave every time. So consequently, we need to note here, cosine is going to start Where did cosine's wave start? Okay, well, and I'm not going to say one because we're going to change that. I'm just going to say at a peak because we are going to change how high that peak is. It starts at a peak and goes downward to start with. The cosine starts at the peak, goes down. But the period and the amplitude are still the same. Yes, the period and the amplitude are still the same. It's still amplitude normal is one unit. The period, it still repeats itself every two pi. That all stays the same. It's identical on sine and cosine. That's the good news. Now you're going to make that hard. Mm, not that bad today. Today's not bad. Okay, we are going to do a little graphing action here. see if I get the right thing or not. Okay, I want to graph just ordinary plain sine. So I'm going to go say, hey dude, graph sine of x. Okay, but I want to tell it to zoom differently here. You go menu for zoom. Anybody see a good choice over there in the zoom choices? Trig. Trig. Number eight, trig. zoom trig. It's got a zoom trig because then Okay, what numbers is it plotting between? It's got it's doing just like the graph paper. This is a half a unit. Each tick tick marks a half a unit. One, one and a half, two. If that's six point two eight, that's two pi. That's two pi sitting out there. So it's graphing from negative two pi to pi, positive two pi, which makes it a little nicer. Okay, I didn't get a graph, which means I need to change my document settings to radians because this calculator probably isn't in it. Nope, it's not. So to graph, you'll have to be in radians all the time. Can you graph 
Um, you can, doesn't always work right. Why didn't I get a graph? Where do you get the graph? I typed my next in. I uh, it's it's got in the oh, here. I shouldn't have. Okay. Fine. X. Enter. Okay, here we go. Wait! <laughs> Hold on. I want to play with what happens if we start changing the numbers in the equation. So I'm going to go down now, and I'm going to hit tab, and I um, I want you to have, uh, here's what, we'll just go back up. What do you think is going to happen if I put? Five. Mm, I only want to go about three. A three in front of sign. Well, three tells like how big it is, or how big it is. Okay, do you mean smaller vertically or smaller side to side? Bigger hill. You're taking a times three. You're putting a three, you're saying three times sign, so it takes every y coordinate times three. So we take every y coordinate times three, they all get three times bigger. So therefore, instead of having an amplitude of one, I have an amplitude of three. three. Yeah. So putting a number in front simply changes the, the height of the wave, the amplitude. That's all it's going to do. Okay. What's going to happen, one other thing, what's going to happen if I go back and I put a negative 3? Is it possible to flip these? It is indeed possible to flip these. It flips by the rules you already know. So a negative in front should flip it which way? Or over the x. It should flip upside down. So what's this going to look like if it goes upside down? Zero is still going to be zero. It's just going to have It's going to be like reverse. I think you should flip them over. Yeah. It's going to go down first. The wave's going to go down first instead of going up first. So if you flip a sign over, it still starts at zero. It just goes down first. Okay. Now, if it's a cosine, cosine starts at the peak. So if you flip a cosine, it's going to start at the valley. That's going to be your description there. Okay. That's the amplitude change. Now, let's make it more fun. Hit enter. Is enter? Oh, did I? I'm sorry, I didn't flip it. Sorry. Okay, there's a flip. So I just did. It'll be like all on that. Oh, we are squared and all that. No, we aren't even. I never could go there with that with you. That's whoa. <laughs> That's when your calculator does the work when you want to play with those kind of things. Yeah. I'm going to go back now and I want to change this. I'm going to take this time. I do want you to have a comparison. So I am. I can attempt to delete the negative 3 here. I want it to just be plain sign again. And then I want to go down, and on the, on the second one, I want to make it become sine of 2x. What happens if I put the 2 on the x inside the function Devin? Knee south. Okay, so. That's, you think it's going to change what? Okay. Have you done this before? <laughs> you think that you think the way the you know, we have farther apart ways and we have closer together ways. Okay. And so what I want you to note, let me get that out of the way. What I want you to note is, what's the length of the period now? How long does it take it to be one cycle? Shorter. It's shorter. It started here, and it ended right over here, which would be? One pi. It isn't it half as much? So yes, it's one pi. OK, so we're going to remember that. When we did sine of 2x, the period was one pi. So I want to go change it again. And instead of that, I would like to type this as a half, but it's easier if I type it as 0.5. So I'm putting this in as 0.5. Okay, so Michael's betting is getting twice as long. Because now, yeah, it's going to be a 2 pi period because it's going to take a full. Actually, it's not 2 pi, but 4 pi. Because see, this is only from here to 0 to the end of the graph is only half of our wave. 
That's already two pies, so it's going to take another two pies. We're going to get four, four, four pies before we get this done. So what I want you all to do is for me figure out, let me go back, can you see the pattern of what's happening? Normal sign had a period of pi. When we threw a 2 in front of it, in front of the x, we got a period of half a pi. So when we threw a period of 1 half in front of it, we got 4 pi. That's near normal period 2 pi. Okay. So what's happening? I don't want to deal negative yet. Like two. It's doing something to 2 pi every time. To figure out what the period length is going to be, you have to do something to 2 pi. That, that was 1 pi, sorry. Yeah, I'm just going to be listening to you all right when you're done. Yeah, it's only 1 pi. So 2 pi, when we put a 2 in front, what did it do to it? It divided by 2, didn't it? So I got 2 pi over 2. So what's it doing with a half? But isn't that the same thing as dividing by a half? Yeah. It divided by the number in front of x. Flip it over, it's 4 pi. So all you actually have to do, if you have a general formula, this is for sine or cosine, they write it with the letter A representing the number in front and the letter B representing the number on x, the coefficient on x, Okay, which letter controls the amplitude of the wave? Amplitude is how tall it is, so A controls amplitude. Yeah, A controls amplitude. Okay, amplitude by definition is a distance. So even if that number has a negative on it, if they say name the amplitude, amplitude is always a positive answer. So consequently, we write it as an absolute value to remind you that this has to be a positive number. If they just say name the amplitude, it's positive whatever. Now, period, then, we just figured out to calculate period, I have to do what? Divide what by? Not what was I dividing at? What was on top every time? Pi. Two pi. Two pi was on top of those every time. So two pi, yes, divided by the number in front of x. So you always do two pi divided by b. Um, technically, that's also an absolute value, but I'm not going to throw you negative so you're probably not going to have to worry about it, but if there were a negative on the, the x in the inside, you would have to make it positive. So those two things you got to stick in your head and be like forever. <laughs> you've got to be able to do that. All right, so finally, now that we know this, we can draw a graph. It's pretty exciting. We know the basics. Yes, this I'm going to do a whole new graph feature, yes. So, oh, thank you. Oh, yikes, we're way over.